Welcome to the complete collection of Derek Rose's greatest stories, told by NBA players and legends. If you are new around here and you haven't seen an episode within this series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below. Click on that link and you'll find all the episodes within the series. Thank you to everyone that mentioned I should do an episode on Derek Rose. If you would like to support the channel, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode within the series. Without further ado, I quickly want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Before the video begins, this video is kindly sponsored by Manscaped. I'm sure you're all very well aware of Manscaped, but if you haven't heard of them, they're a global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products, and they are the best. And I'm sure you've seen Manscaped everywhere because they are so popular at the moment, and there's a good reason why. In the past, I have tried so many electric shavers and either they just break or they stop working, which is why I'm so glad to finally have a shaver that actually works and is actually made out of good quality material that won't break. Because firstly, it's waterproof, which is amazing. And secondly, the battery is incredible. It lasts 90 minutes with a full charge. But obviously, it's really important to stay clean and hygienic. You don't want to have any scratches or cuts on you and you don't want to have body odor that stinks the room. That's why Manscaped is perfect. Manscaped sent over the Performance Package 4.0 and it was really cool to see what they had. The main reason people go to Manscaped is because of this Lawn Mower 4.0 trimmer, which is incredible. You can have it uncharged for 90 minutes, it's waterproof, everyone knows how great it is, but they also sent over the Weed Whacker because no one wants to have hair in their nose and their ears. And they also sent over a crop preserver, which is a deodorant for downstairs, and a crop reviver, which is a spray. And because everyone's traveling again, it's really important that you have something that you can take with you when you are traveling. They sent over a travel bag, anti-chafing boxes, and they also sent over a mat to make everything clean. So if you don't want to end up like these players here, be sure to get your lawnmower 4.0 and the rest of the equipment down below in the description. There's a link that you can click and you get 20% off if you use code NickSmithNBA. Thank you Manscaped for sponsoring this video and welcome to the complete collection of Derrick Rose's greatest stories. I played with a lot of great players. Derrick Rose during that time was probably the most talented player I ever played with. Obviously you don't become an MVP by not, not working hard. I think the only word that he really cares about is, is winning. Like some of your favorite players I've seen when D Rose was MVP year, D Rose and D Rose with D Rose, I've seen people catch the Rose flu. Hmm. Yeah. Derek yeah. is a dude that, you know, got a great work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Very humble. Uh, I admire how humble he is about the game. Such a good, humble kid. He's a humble guy. And they had a young D Rose yeah. before the MVP Rose, the yeah. season before. Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why. Why? Why can't I do that? Because yeah, that was a quality that I, that I had when I was a kid growing up. How did MJ impact you growing up in Chicago? Oh, man. Growing up in Chicago, I had the chance to uh, go over MJ Crib when I was younger, when I was like in high school. But like I said, in Chicago, basketball is the culture, so it, it, it holds weight. So um, I got invited to his house when I was a sophomore. I wake up that morning, um, they, they pick me up, we head out there, and I just remember getting to the gate. The, you see the 23 on the gate, the gate open and where we drive in and you see like this impeccable like landscape and you keep driving through the um, driveway and we saw like a, a, a speed sign that blew me away. Like wow, you got a speed sign in his, in his driveway. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the house and um, it's like a palace, it's like a complex and you see like five or six vehicles out there. So um, we get out the car and I remember the main entrance was to our left. We were going like to the right. So when we get out the car, we passed um, by the, the, the six vehicles that we saw when we was pulling in. They were um, six Bentleys, GTs. Blew me away. Um, we get to the, the entrance and um, the whole time I'm thinking like, man, I'm not gonna see MJ. He's gonna be somewhere else in the house. He's just gonna let us like 
you know what I mean, playing the gym and all that. The door, it was where the gym was. They were in that hooping. Like, um, that whole time, I watched them every second while I was there. Like, watched them the entire time. Watching them be a dad, watch them, watch them take out garbage. <laughs> like, things I never thought I'd be able to see, but um, I got that opportunity. So, um, I remember that um, them taking me back home, and I'm in my room, and I got the TV off, and I'm looking at the paint on my wall, because like a couple of months prior to that, I tried to paint my room with blue paint, and the job, the, the paint job was terrible. So I'm looking at the paint, like, man, what the fuck? Like, what am I doing here? And I remember like having that jinx feeling that I had like prior, like to me actually, um, me and Mike, when I was younger, I used to always feel like I was going to get jinxed because I was winning a lot. So ninth grade, after I met them, after I went to that career, it went away. I'm like, man, fuck that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that lifestyle. My mom going to live decent. Whatever I got to do, I, I got to do it. And uh, I, I promised myself that night that I was going to be on a mission. And me seeing that, um, with MJ giving me that opportunity, it made me, let me manifest my dreams from what I saw. Rose, he raises up. On step down, now Rose raises up. Rose flashes right on in. And her, John this is, is like, in trouble. He's in trouble. As soon as, as soon as he laid his back down, just turned. Kwame Brown did. Yeah, I'm not sure Kwame was sure which side he went by. Watch this right here. Here goes Rose again. Flies in. It's good. Two games. Again, just really well. My colleague, Missy Isaacson, actually got Michael on the phone a couple hours ago, and he had this to say about you. I'm very happy for him. The Bulls deserve an all-star. He is a very special player. He will represent Chicago well. Congratulations to him and the Bulls. Hearing that from him, what does that make you feel like? I wish I could have recorded that conversation. <laughs> I wish I could record it. For him to say that, it's crazy. That's crazy right there. Young guys do not earn your praise easily. But there was clearly a respect on the court while you were going after him and he was going after you from that first game. And last year, too, something something happened, something impressed you about him. What, what was it, Coke? Well, I mean, I, I can tell when a player you know, truly wants to be better, when a player truly wants to improve. And, and I respect that about them. And I, I admire that and because you know, that was a quality that I, that I had when I was a kid growing up. Um, and, you know, that being said, I mean, I've seen improvement in this game from last year to this year. I mean, he has a long range ball now. He can squat behind the pick and shoot. You know, he can pull up off the dribble and shoot. Um, you know, him getting to the rim obviously goes, you know, unquestioned. Um, so seeing that improvement you know, shows me that he's putting the time into the gym. And um, I certainly respect that. Favorite point guard battle? D. Rose. Ooh. D. Rose, D. the Rose. god. Two mm. point guards. Mm. 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 His rookie year? <sighs> go, go, is that nigga seven games? Problem. A future all-star and possible MVP was his first playoff game ever. And that was against the Boston Celtics. I believe I was actually having like a house gathering with some friends. Everybody just sort of stopped what we were doing. <laughs> he is out of this world. First game of the playoffs? That's, that's what they're telling us. It's a very special place to play. A lot of history. They were the defending champs. What he did that night was just show that I'm here to stay and nobody can stop me. People really underestimate having hope. And that's what Derek represented for us as his teammates. And, and for the city. One point lead for the Bulls. There is Rose towards Brad Miller. Zip to say, where were you? Was realize it. He does and hits it. How about the Bulls with an eight point lead here in the garden? Can, can you compare a prime time D Rose to anyone you've ever either, either played against or seen? Can you compare him to anybody? No, nah, man, ain't nobody. See, I was about to say you can't. Ain't nobody fucking him like 
seven games straight when he was healthy, boy, you're putting your ass in trouble. You're on your heels the whole game. The um, whole game. And ain't, ain't, ain't no one person in front of him. You got a whole scouting port on him for sure. That's, what, that's how yeah, we have Pack it. the paint. Pack the paint. And he's still getting there and <laughs> jumping still, over everybody. He's still going to get in there. But yeah. then he can hey, yeah. he can hit that little one dribble pull up too. He's hitting that too. He's hitting threes when he's rolling like he was a problem. He, he was too explosive, yo. Miller's got 14. Miller's got 10. Oh, my goodness. You can't foul there. Were you aware that you tied Abdul Jabbar's first playoff game in his debut? He had 36 points. You had 36 points, Tennessee. Were you aware of that record? No, ma'am, but I'm happy I'm there. <laughs> we didn't win the championship. We lost in the first round, but people still come up to me in Chicago and talk to me about that series. That year, uh, my brother was playing on the opposite team. Derek just get to going crazy, like bucket after bucket. Nobody anticipated the Bulls to even win or have a chance. So after the game, I remember talking to my brother, and he just told me he real. He like, nah, he real. I mean, he's he was a for sure one man fast break every night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could have been another team. Yeah. Oh, so it could have been another it team. It could have been. So yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like it we was, wasn't just Miami that this could have worked in. It could have worked. Miami about. was the only. Well, if it, I don't know if it was. If it, I don't know, but I know at the time when we yeah. were trying to make a decision of what city we wanted to play in and what we wanted to be. Like, we had to keep our options open, too. These other, Chicago was 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 on the top of both of our lists. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty much Chicago, Miami was on the top. So yeah. Chicago, at the time, they had to offer, they had two max contracts, yeah. and they had a young D-Rose, yeah. before the MVP Rose, the yeah. season before. There was so much talk in 2010 about LeBron and Wade coming to Chicago. Did yeah. you envision it then? Think about you guys playing together at that point. Yeah, a little bit. They had a Luau Dane, they had Noah, yeah. they had, you know what I'm saying, they had all these pieces. Yeah, so I'm like, mm, in, the, in like the city, that. in Chicago, in the biggest, one of the biggest markets? Yeah, yeah. Man, crazy. Yeah. But then it was like, ah, me, you, and D Rose, that's a lot. It's one ball, we yeah. all need it. Yeah. That may be too much. Where this afternoon, two championship contenders meet. There's a Jesse Jackson at the game enjoying the festivities at the United Center. Saw a lot of that guy. Derrick Rose. Bulls start the second half strong. There's D. Rose, hand in his face. Go to that. Then it's D. Rose's turn once again. The crazy crossover. And that's just ridiculous. Seriously. Sickening what he does to the defense. So in the fourth, Derrick Rose trying to take over as the battle of MVP candidates heated up. There's Wade answering with the three. Bulls still out by two. Rose, anything you can do, I can do better. Watch what I do to Mario Chalmers. You like that? No, sir. His big night, not enough. With no LeBron, Bulls send the heat to a season-high tying third straight loss with their eighth straight win at the United Center. Their longest home streak since 05. And they won two championships right after that. Were you thinking at all what it would be like? Did you ever in your mind say, you know, I could imagine running with Dwayne Wade and LeBron James? Oh, yeah, yeah. I tried, too. Like, people always said I didn't recruit. I, re I tried to recruit. I put out a video, but it wasn't for me to say that. Um, I felt like the organization was supposed to say that, and they didn't. And this past week admitted that uh, he, in fact, did text LeBron James in the offseason. And here's what he said in the text. <laughs> Just text him, um, just let him know that um, I wouldn't mind playing with him. Um, and all the rumors that I didn't want to play with him, they was false. Text back, say he didn't believe it or whatever. Um, I just told him I, I just wanted to win. That was the biggest thing, was just winning to me. Um, and that was it. What did you What did you do? For I put out a video for made, them, to video? him, Chris Bosh, and LeBron. And the, or, the organization did the same? I mean, it ain't for me to say that, but yeah, they didn't say anything about it. They sent it. I don't know if they really actually looked at it or um, played the video, but I made a video, but at the time, it wasn't for me to say that. You mean a video of you talking, saying, come, yes, come yes, play with me yes, and come to Chicago? Yes. It's high. The way I look at it within myself, why not? Why can't I be the MVP of the league? Why can't I be the best player in the league? I don't see why, why, why can't I do that? I, I seen what was happening in Detroit and they was kind of breaking up that team. And I was like, all right, you know what, Rip? You know, maybe it's your time to go. 
right? So, like, you start thinking, you start looking at all the different teams and saying, you know, what is the best fit, right? I knew Chicago at the time needed a two guard, right? Bad. And, uh, uh, and, and, I, and I felt like, all right, you know what? I can be the missing piece to get them over the hump because for Chicago at the time, they will always meet up against the Miami Heat with LeBron and D. Wade. Welcome to the American Airlines Arena, sold out as it has been all season, as late arriving as they may be. Still every seat sold to see some of the big stars of the NBA as the Bulls and Heat beat head to head. Nobody considered them a title contender. People now say maybe they can. Big reason, Derrick Rose has been great this year. Well, look at the fact that he's in the top 10, not only in scoring, but in assists. And then he's improved his field goal, three-point shooting, and at the foul line. With the clock going down, Mike, there is no one better that you want having the ball because of his incredible quickness. Rose fakes a three, takes a better two. See LeBron explode and get that board. Wow, Rose scored as James was there waiting for him. Rose, see if he fouls him. There he goes. But there's a problem. He's five for ten at halftime, and he has five assists. We're seeing him at his best because he's not forcing a thing. Right. I admire his passion. Uh, I admire how humble he is about the game. And, uh, you know, I think the only word that he really cares about is, is winning. You know, and, uh, you know, for him to be as young as he is, um, to have a franchise on his back and to be able to carry it, um, you know, in his home city, um, I think he's great. Um, not only for the city of Chicago, he's great for the NBA. Um, you know, he's great for, you know, all kids that look up to him as well. Um, you know, he's an unbelievable talent. And uh, I'm looking forward to joining him on the Olympic team. And then the second round will be the key in the East. For the Heat, there's that uncanny ability of Rose. From Chicago. Rose is back in. Rose, what speed. Rolls it in. Rolls by four. Rose, got another one. 27 points for the MVP candidate, Derrick Rose, on the road in Miami. And the Chicago Bulls have swept the Heat three games this year. Now you had guys have the season sweep on Miami. What kind of statement does that make about where the Chicago Bulls team is, you know, where your place is in the league? Um, we just think that we can contend with any team in the league. As, lo as long as we play hard, play with the edge, I think that we should be fine. One theory is slow down Derrick Rose, you beat the Bulls. Is it that simple? Yeah, you have an idea how to do that? <laughs> Is MVP. And we always say about our athletes that, hey, if you're going to talk the talk, walk the walk. And in 2010, 2011, Derrick Rose walked the walk. Goes to his left, goes right line, and drives to the This is MVP time. And you hear the MVP chance. Why not? The MVP thing was just crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. Getting a chance to play with Derrick Rose the year after coming off his MVP season. Um, you guys are in the playoffs, M mistake me if I'm wrong, game in hand. Uh, Tibbs keeps him in. He gets hurt mm -hmm. and never comes back the same. Bro, like, I played with a lot of great players. Derrick Rose during that time was probably the most talented player I ever played, played with. Mm. Yeah. I mean, like, as, as, at, at 23, too. At, Think about at, that. At, at Just starting. At 23, man, yo, this dude was ridiculous. And I seen what he was doing in practice, night in and night out, and he had a great work, work, work ethic. Like, and Derek was that type of guy. So playing against the 76ers during that time, and yeah, a lot of people say, hey, you know what, why was Derek in the game? And, you know, I, I would ask the question too. I remember those playoffs starting, and I believed in my soul and my heart that nobody could fuck with us. It's a pretty good feeling to feel that way. And nobody is going to be able to take this from us. This is our chance to win the championship. Derek was ready. We were ready for him. That game won. I mean, we were so ready. Like, I remember coming down. I think I made, like, a, a jump hop to, a, like, a pass. When that happens, I'm like, oh, snap. I'm like, bro, get up. Like, like, like get, up. get up. I remember passing the ball and feeling like my ACL tear a little bit. It didn't tear all the way, it tore a little bit. So when I went down on the floor, after I threw the pass, I went down on the floor. Right when I like laid down and put my hands over my head, I felt it tear a toe, like it totally tore. My leg just started shaking. I didn't know what was going on. 
I remember walking to the back to get a x-ray. The x-ray, of course, didn't do anything. They needed an MRI. And I remember going to the MRI after getting out the MRI machine. They told me that it was tore and just breaking down. Like, I couldn't believe it. When Derek went down, I was like, all right, he might be out for a couple games, but he's going to be all right. I remember where I was sitting when I got the news that he tore his ACL. It was, uh, it was a lot. When he doesn't get up and he's walking off, man, it, it crushed me. Not because of my own individual, you know, uh, you know, me coming there and wanting to win the championship, but just knowing Derek is a good kid. Derek yeah. is a dude that, you know, got a great work ethic, you know what I'm saying, very humble. And this guy right here, man, you know, best point guard in the game. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, couldn't nobody mess with D. Rose during yep. that time, mm -hmm. you know? So to see him going down, I just felt like, like, you know, our chances of winning the championship is, is, is very rare to none. There may be no highlight or, or video clip uh, that former players want to see less than the one you just saw right there of Derrick Rose, uh, first game of the playoffs, uh, blowing out his left knee, uh, torn ACL. Reggie, when you saw that happen, when you watch something like that, what's hitting you in the gut? So when he went down and the camera focused on his face right then and there, because he's never really had a major injury throughout his whole career, AAU, high school, college, whatever, you could see on his face that it was something serious. Guys are coming back in every sport from ACL, so there's no doubt he's going to be OK in terms of his recovery. Uh, but how much of the explosion will he lose, and, and how can he How much up here? Yeah. How much up here is really going to? He does that move how many times a game? 20, 30? To be able to make that move and just explode is it, 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 mental, but it's about having the confidence, OK, my knee. I think for him, the big question is now, do you change your approach to the game? Do you change your game? I mean, is, is he going to become more of a facilitator? Can he? Can he think the game? Can he play the game? You know, you, you, you're going to think about those moves, Chuck, I think, for mm -hmm. him. You know, how do you land? And do you go full speed? And that, that's going to be the big difference, I think, for Derrick Rose. I'm not wearing that man's sneaker. <laughs> I got to play against him, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not nothing against D. Rose, you know what I mean? I love what he does. It won't be on my foot. <laughs> I can't wait work. to play D. Rose. I can't wait. Finds Rose. Rose trying to get open. Fires away. Bang! It's over! The Bulls win at the buzzer! And he jumps in midair. You catch him. He's just got the stale face. That's my Derrick Rose. Words at the time couldn't describe that feeling. The thought process was, man, we overcame. Man. You know what I mean? You overcame, we overcame, and it's paid off. It showed at that moment. We just thought it was nothing but great from there. That was a crazy year, and that was a really, really big shot. And I really felt like this was the chance for us to go to the finals. I was supposed to get the ball in the corner. I said, forget it. I ran towards the ball. They gave me an opportunity to get the shot off. I just gotta thank my teammates, man. They give me so much energy. They give me so much um, confidence, man. They give me the ball when I need it. And they live with me. They live with my mistakes. I'm fortunate, very fortunate. Well, congratulations on the win. Mike, back to you. 14 of his 30 points, Lisa, here in the fourth quarter. The native son of Chicago gives the Bulls a thrilling and exhilarating win. You know, we were, again, headed in a good direction. So many people had kind of written him off and talked poorly about him. His heart had changed in some ways too, you know, about how people perceived him. As an organization, we were kind of in, a, in an iffy spot and we knew we had some decisions to make going forward. Derek, Derek, you'll be uh, 29 when this contract ends. Can you think of uh, playing for another team other than the Bulls? I don't think so, unless they trade me. Or <laughs> unless they trade me. That ain't happening. Uh, <laughs> I would want to finish my career here, but we'll have to see. You lying. Okay, or you just... <laughs> 
just in awe. <laughs> it's no hard feelings, like nothing, no grudges or anything. If it was that, it's no hard feelings at all. I understand it's a business and um, they're trying to do what's best for the team, I guess. And um, I don't think I would be wrong for using that as motivation. I don't know why I was traded, but I would like to tell them thank you. <laughs> thank you. For real. Well, I think they have to be happy, mainly because he's been solid. He's played between 30 and 32 minutes in the four games, averaging 16 points on 16 shots, 45% shooting. Okay, the rebounding solid for a point guard, but the assist, 2.5, he is not in the top 40. That has got to change. Rose fakes, drives, gets inside once again. Dangerous nice pass, gets pass. it to Rose. Nice. Rose drives underneath, layup. Nice. Oh, beautiful play from Rose. Rose jump shot. He's feeling it. Yep, he's feeling everything. Around again to shape. Rose inside to Noah oh. and the layup. And Rose with his 10th assist of the game. Rose drives, layup, banks it in, and a foul. What a beautiful move from Derrick Rose. One thing we do know about Mr. Rose is he's a fighter. So these first couple games, he didn't play well. Single digits last three games in a row. He's not going to quit. You're not going to break them. And it's early in the season. This is going into the playoffs to be a problem, but still plenty of basketball left. They'll be fine. New coach, new system. Noah coming off the bench. You know, full team not there. They're adjusting, but Derrick Rose will be fine. I'm God gifted. So if I just go out there and play, you'll be able to easily see that the best revenge is massive success. And that's the mindset that I have right now. Rose attacks, challenges Derrick Rose, has 41. One off of his NBA career high. The stop, the go, the finish, 46 for Rose. Even when a superhero is knocked down, he's still a superhero at the end of the day. And Derrick Rose showed why he's still a superhero. Amazing story, just in terms of what he's been through. Um, it's great for, obviously, him. Comeback story where all the opportunity, believe in yourself, and um, we obviously knew what he was capable of um, and the level that he was at before the injuries. And I know people that have been around him from from then that have talked about how hard he works and obviously you don't become an MVP by not, not working hard, but that has carried him uh, through the, the roller coaster ride he's been on. Just you know, understanding how hard he worked to get back. You know, we've seen him in here. Sitting back on the court, just playing basketball, which we all know Derek loves to do. That was great. Mm, now, I don't really like to do hypotheticals, but the trajectory you saw him on at 23, barring injury, where would he rank amongst the greats if we were, mm -hmm. shit, what, 15 years, 16 years in, and, and D. Rose was just able to play through with no injury? I don't think, you know, uh, Rose got to his potential. I don't that's think why, That's why I was about to say, that's why I was about to say it to me. To me, it's, I agree with you when you say it's hard to, it's hard to say who, but in that same breath, to me, I got to, I got to kind of slant towards D. Rose because he got, he first of all, he's the youngest MVP ever. Mm -hmm. But number two, he got to where he got without even, like, you know what I'm saying? We don't even know if he reached his full potential. No, he, he didn't. I mean, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't reach his full potential. I think he, he had so much excitement. People got to understand what this kid did. The the and year. then you mm -hmm. go win rookie of the year. And you, like, literally, he lived out every Chicago kid's dream. Mm -hmm. And he maxed it, though. Only thing he didn't do was get a chip. But he maxed it. He was the MVP of the league. What a youngest ever. He the toast of the town. Yeah, rookie, it don't rookie, matter rookie, what rookie. happened. Like, they can't never take that man. But that's what you can never. You can never. In Chicago. And it ain't nothing that nobody could do about it. it ain't, he did what he did. And can't nobody change it. Can't no injury change it. Can't nothing change it. Where does he rank in the historic? Because to me, he was he was a generational talent as well, but probably one of the most special. At, at his position? Yeah. In my opinion, Derrick Rose is definitely top 10 easily. You know, could be mm -hmm. top five. Man, mm -hmm. this dude, like, like I'm telling you, like, I, I mean, there's a lot of great players in our game right now when you're talking about the point guard's position. Russell Westbrook. Russ. 
Uh, Steph, uh, CP, Steph, CP, Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listen, none of them dudes wanted no smoke with Derrick Rose and Derrick <laughs> right. Rose era. Exactly. I'm, yeah. I'm telling you right now, none of them dudes <laughs> wanted no smoke with D Rose during D-Rose that time. Is a problem. Trust Straight and up. believe. I hate when people run away from competition. I hate when people don't want to play against or don't match up. I done seen it in the league. People been scared of each other. I done seen, people, I done seen people fake injuries. Fake injuries. Like some of your favorite players I done seen when D. Rose was MVP year, D. Rose, and D. Rose was D. Rose. I done seen people catch the Rose flu. Hmm. Yeah. I, we people call, think that's not, people think no, that's fake. We, we used to joke about it. Because me and D. Rose sit right here. <laughs> And we'll, we'll go out there, I used to start, and I knew when somebody was kind of shaking of them or something, so, I, hmm. you know, like, I knew my role. Didn't you tell him earlier this year that you w- grew up watching his mixtapes? Did that happen on court? I think you've told me a story like that. Yeah, this was uh, when he was with Detroit still. I got caught on a switch with him, and he went to his kind of like in and out pull up or whatever, and I actually, I got to stop. I, I blocked it uh, partially. Whoa. Yeah, we secured secured the ball, went the other way, and there was a, a dead ball, a free throw. We were at the line, and he came up to me, and he was like, man, Duncan, you must have been watching all my all my game film. You know my moves. And I, I just kind of laughed. I was like, man, I've been watching your game film and your highlights well before this year, man. Like, I, I grew up watching that. And uh, he just had this moment. He was like, man, that's crazy, man. And he said to me, he's like, I'm a huge fan of your game. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. I was like, I was like, no, 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 no. I'm a fan of your game. And there was just kind of like this little moment, the game within the game of like, that's crazy. Like Derrick Rose, you know, former youngest MVP ever, like, you know, all the accolades. It was definitely kind of that like aha moment uh, for me. I've had a bunch of them in my career, but it was definitely one of them. Our community, we don't care how many times Derek get hurt. Like, that's a part of life. That's a part of being a basketball player. And we never saw a downside. We never thought about a slope. But as a Bulls fan, what did you think of kind of the rise and fall, like what happened with Derek and seeing how high he went and then how low things got? I mean, Derek had no lows. He didn't because he still maintained. Derek is a legend no matter what. We always wanted him to come back. That was the most important thing is Derek coming back. We're his family, and we just love every time he came back. Are there any um, Simeon players in the great lineage and history you look up to, role models? Oh, they're gross. I look up to that man so much. Me being that sixth grade kid and eager to be in the gym with Derek and be around greatness, just those little memories is what helped me be the person that I am and helped my hoop dreams and inspired me to go to Simeon and to be like him. That's my hero. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you once again to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the link in the description and use code NICKSMITHMBA for 20% off. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification button to stay up to date with all the new episodes within the series. It's been your boy Nick Smith. I am out. Peace.